Hello everyone, welcome to Little Things. This is probably the most requested tutorial so far. So there you go. Make sure to watch the whole intro because I'm gonna talk about the materials as well as the sizing of the gloves and hand. This tutorial is absolutely beginner friendly. So this is for people that have never crocheted before, like zero experience or just starting out. Since I wanna make it as detailed as possible, I've split this video into two parts. So this is part one and part two is either up there or down in the description box. So I'll make sure that you guys can follow along in each and every step. Since I'm going to go through every step very slowly, if you're a more advanced crochet and you just want the pattern, it is on my Etsy shop, which I've linked down below. And yes, I just started my Etsy shop. Please support me, guys. And yes, you can definitely sell the finished product as long as you credit me as the pattern designer. This is your sign to start your own crochet small business because it's such a fun experience. Also, you can pay off your yarn money as well. And the key to having a successful small business is to have a good website. And this brings me to today's sponsor, which is Universe. Universe is a drag and drop app for creating websites where you can pick your personalized domain and customize your website. My favorite part about Universe is how user-friendly it is. I suck at anything about technology. I can't even use Final Cut Pro or Adobe to edit my videos, yet I can still make my own website with Universe under half an hour. There are so many templates that you can choose from. You can add buttons to redirect people to your other links, for example, your YouTube channel or your Etsy. If you're based in the US, Universe Cell Block allows you to silly creation in minutes. Another really cool feature is that there is AI assistance, which means you can ask AI to literally build a whole website for you. And it saves you so much time. Universe is free, but you can jump to Universe Pro to remove Universe branding, get your own custom.com domain, make discount code, and get a lower flat rate 5% transaction fee. And unlock so many other cool features. So go check out my link in the description box below and get 25% off your first year with Universe Pro and the free Universe version as well. After making your own website, make sure to drop it in the comments below for a chance to get a shout out or a feature in the next video. So now let's talk about the materials you need for the cat paw. I'm using 5 ply milk cutting yarn with the color pink and white. Scissors, stitch marker, and darning needle. So now let's talk about the sizing of the gloves. So the glove that I made fits perfectly on my hand. This part is 8 millimeter, wait, 8 centimeters. And then this part is 16 centimeters. So if you have similar hand size with me, just use 5 ply yarn with 3.5 millimeter hook. If you have a little bit bigger hand size, then 8 ply with 4 millimeter hook. If you have really big hands, then use 10 ply with 4.5 millimeter hook. So now that we've gone through everything, let's start the tutorial. First, we're going to start with using our white yarn. And then we're going to start by doing a slip knot. To do a slip knot, we're going to grab the end of the yarn with our right hand. And then with our left hand, I'm pointing up two fingers. And then I'm going to use the two fingers for my left hand and then grab the yarn like this. And I'm going to twist it and then make a loop on my hand. So now you have a loop on your left hand and then the tail on the right hand. We're going to pull this tail on our right through the loop on our left. So we're just going to grab it, the tail, and then for our left hand, we're going to pull both the tail and the working yarn and then just pull it. And then we're going to hold the slip knot and then pull the tail to make the loop smaller. Put the hook inside the loop and we want the loop to be not too big or not too loose. So if your hook can move like this, so that is the perfect tension. So the way I'm holding the yarn, I'm placing the yarn on top of my three fingers here and then I'm going to wrap it around it. I'm going to go behind and then on top like this so there is a big loop around my three fingers and then I'm going to go behind my index finger like this and then hold my piece with my middle finger and thumb like this and then the way I'm holding the hook I'm just holding like how I'm writing so like this but you can also hold your hook like how you're holding a knife I personally just prefer like the pencil gripping method I guess also, by the way, my left index finger is always pointed up to keep the yarn from sliding normally. So now let's start chaining. So first we're going to chain 16 and to chain it, we're going to start by yarning over. To yarn over, we bring our hook behind the working yarn and then on top. So grab it like this. As you can see, the yarn is already on my hook 
And then all we gotta do is pull through the loop on our hook. So we just pull it like this. And as you can see, here is our first chain and you can see a V. So we're gonna repeat this until we have a total of 16 chains. So again, yarn over, we bring our hook to the back of the working yarn and then on top and then place your hook like this and then we're gonna pull it through the loop on our hook. So just pull it like this. So this is our second chain. So third one, we yarn over and then we pull it through the loop on our hook. Like this. And then again, the fourth one, yarn over, bring our hook behind and then on top. And then once you've grabbed the yarn, we're gonna pull it through the loop on our hook. So just pull it through like this. Now we have four chains. So again, yarn over. And then place it on top of the working yarn and then pull it through this loop. And then for our sixth one, the same, yarn over. Place the hook on top of the working yarn and then pull it through the loop. We've already made six chains so far and we just need to do 10 more. And I'll do a little bit quicker because I think we've already got the hang of it. So yarn over. And then pull through the loop on our hook. Just like this. And then yarn over. And then pull through. And then yarn over. So I just go ahead and finish up my 16 chain. So as you can see, it's just a whole bunch of Vs. So the way to count the number of chain is to count the number of Vs. So as you can see, 1, 2, 3, 15, 16. Okay, I got 16, but let's just say you got like 18. So I'm just gonna chain two more. All we gotta do is to just frog it. Frog, we just pull the working yarn. We just pull it like this and then we undo one chain. So now we got 17 chain, and then we just need to pull it once more. Now we have 16 chains, so don't worry if you got extra chains. So now we're going to start doing the double crochet. So we're going to insert our hook and place our first double crochet in the second chain from hook. The V right here that is closest to our hook, this is the first chain from hook. And the one next to it is the second chain from hook. And then this one is the third chain from hook. So I'm just going to place my finger here just so we remember that this is the third chain. So now let's do our first double crochet. To do our double crochet, so we yarn over first. So we bring a hook to the back of the working yarn and then on top. As you can see, the working yarn is wrapped around my hook once. And then I'm going to insert it into the third chain from hook. And then you just insert it right in the middle of the chain which is right in the middle of the V. After that, I'm going to yarn over. So place the hook on top of the working yarn and then we're going to pull it through the V. So pull it through like this and then now you'll have three loops on your hook. All we got to do is to yarn over again. And to just pull through the first two loops, which is these two. So we just pull it through the first one and then the second loop. And now we're left with two loops on our hook. We just got to yarn over and then pull through all two loops. So yarn over and then pull through these two. And then ta-da, here is our first double crochet and we're gonna place the second double crochet into the second chain. So the second chain is the chain that's right next to the first chain, so which is this V. 
So we're going to make another double crochet. So yarn over, just wrap the yarn around your hook, and then insert your hook into the V, which is right next to the previous one. We just insert it right in the middle. We're going to yarn over. So yarn over and grab the yarn from above, and then we're going to pull it through the V. To bring up a loop and then now we have three loops on our hook we're going to yarn over and just pull through the first two loops so yarn over and then pull through these two loops the first two and then now we're left with two loops we're just going to yarn over and then pull through the rest of the two loops and here is our second double crochet. And then to do our third one, we're going to yarn over. It's basically all gonna be the same. And then insert our hook into the chain next to our previous one, which is here. You just insert it. And then we're gonna yarn over. And then pull it through the V. And then now we have three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through just the first two. So yarn over, bring your hook on top of the working yarn, and then pull it through the first two loops, just like this. And then now, we, now we're left with two loops on our hook, yarn over, and then pull through the last two, just like this. So the fourth one is here, and let's make our fourth double crochet. So yarn over, insert our hook into the chain, yarn over again, and then pull it through the V to bring up a loop. Now we have three loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over and pull through just the first two loops. Yarn over, basically wrap the yarn around your hook once, and then pull it through the first two loops. And you're left with two loops, as you can see. Yarn over and then pull through the last two loops. So far we have four double crochet. So let's make our fifth one. So yarn over and then insert your hook into the fifth V. And then yarn over and then pull it through the V. Now we got three loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over, bring the yarn on top of the working yarn, and then pull it through the first two loops. So I pulled through the first loop, and then we're left with two loops. So yarn over, and then pull through the last two loops. So I'm going to demonstrate it one more time. I think we all got the hang of it and then I can go a little bit faster because it's all going to be the same stitch, just like we did for the past five ones. So yarn over and then insert the hook into the V like this and then yarn over again, bring the hook on top of the working yarn and then pull it through and then bring up a loop. Now we got three loops on our hook, yarn over, and then just pull it through the first two loops. Like this. And now we're left with two loops on our hook. We're gonna yarn over and then just pull through all two. So it's gonna be the same thing all across. We just need to do seven more. So yarn over. I'm going to do a little bit quicker because it's just the same thing.
So now I have finished 13 double crochet and the way you can count it, you can either count here or count the number of beads on the top. So as you can see, there will be one extra chain. And then what we're gonna do with that extra chain is that we're gonna put six double crochet into this chain. Because if you put six double crochet, it's gonna go like this. It's gonna make a semicircle. So I drew like a little diagram thingy. So I hope you guys would understand it more is where we're crocheting. So this is where we're at. So right here at this point. The pink line here is the six double crochet. So it's gonna go like this. After that, we're gonna work towards bottom. So now let's add six double crochet into the last chain. So it's the same thing. We just place it, just one double crochet into the chain. So this is my first double crochet into the chain. And then we need five more. So it's pretty easy to see where to insert your hook. As you can see, the gap is pretty big here. So we can just yarn over, insert it into this gap here, and then just place another double crochet. This is our second double crochet. This. And then we're going to do our third one. And then we have three more to go. And then I'm just inserting my hook into the exact same chain space. So now we have two more and as you can see, the gap is getting bigger, so it's more visible. So you won't um, insert it into the wrong hole. So yarn over and make our two more into the exact same chain space. So I'm just placing my last double crochet. So as you can see, after you've put six double crochet, it's gonna go like this. Also, you can see that there's a big gap here. Grab the tail and then pull it. It's gonna close up the gap. And then now we're gonna start working on the base and then work from here. As we're crocheting to the left here, we're also gonna hide this tail along the way. So first we're going to yarn over as usual, just like a normal double crochet. And then we're gonna insert it into this little hole right here. After inserting our hook, we're also gonna put the tail on top of the hook. The reason that we do this is to hide the tail in the stitches so we don't have to weave in later. After that, just do a normal double crochet, yarn over, pull through, and now we've got three loops on our hook. Just yarn over, pull through the first two loops, and then we're left with two loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through the rest of the two. So again, yarn over, insert our hook into the next stitch, which is the tiny little dot here. We just insert it here. And then remember to put the tail on top of our hook as well. After that, yarn over, pull it through, and then yarn over again, pull through the first two loops, and then we're left with two loops, yarn over, pull through the rest of the two loops. And then we're gonna do it again, yarn over, insert our hook, Yarn over again, pull through. Now we have three loops on our hook. Yarn over and then pull through the first two loops and then yarn over, pull through the rest of the two. I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing until I reach the end. So now I have reached the end, as you can see, this is the last double crochet, and here is just the chain two that we skipped in the beginning. So we just ignore the chain two and then do the last double crochet into the last chain.
for the tail here, you can just kind of pull it to make sure that it's the gap is closed up and then adjust it like this. So now you have something that looks like this. We need to chain two to give the height to do the double crochet. So now let's start round two. So insert a hook back into the loop. So now we're going to chain two. So yarn over, pull through. And we've made a V, so that V represent a chain. And then yarn over again, pull through. Also, by the way, good job for making round one because if you can make round one, it's pretty easy for you to make the rest of the rounds and the rest of the cat paw because it kind of is the same concept and the same stitches. So yeah, good job. So after chaining two, we're gonna turn our work. Flip our work to the left. And then we're gonna start working from here because with crocheting you can only work from the right to the left you can see there's like little holes these are the stitches so first we're gonna do our first double crochet yarn over first and then insert our hook into the first hole which is like right underneath the chain so just insert it if you look at them from the top it's a bunch of v's just like the chains right and you're basically going under the v's so after inserting yarn over pull through now we have three loops on our hook we're going to yarn over and then pull through just the first two loops and then we're left with two loops yarn over pull through the rest of the two loops now we're gonna make 12 more to have a total of 13 double crochet so I guess at this point, everyone is kind of familiar with doing the double crochet and is kind of comfortable making it on your own. And the way we're going to insert it is just into the next hole. And then on the 13th one, I'm going to place a stitch marker. We're going to look at the stitches from the top. And then as you can see, each stitch has a V. We're going to place the stitch marker under the V. So basically where you're going to insert your hook. And then close it like this. So basically, we have finished our first round. And then we're going to start round two. So we're on here. And we're exactly in this gap. And the gap is where I place a stitch marker. So this is the transition to the increasing stitches that we're gonna do to create the semicircle. The reason why I put the stitch marker here is to indicate that the stitches that are below the stitch marker are always gonna be one double crochet in a single stitch. Whereas this part, which is the stitches above the stitch marker will be having increases. So the stitch marker below is going to be purple lines are always going to be one stitch at a time. No increases. For the pink lines, there will be increases inside. So that is just to clarify and to make it more clear for you guys. So now we're going to make six increases in each stitch. This double crochet increase means to make two double crochet into one stitch. So for this stitch right here, we're going to make two double crochets. So one here and the second double crochet here. Let's do our first double crochet. So just do a normal double crochet into the stitch. We're going to place another double crochet into the exact same stitch. We're going to insert it in the same place, place another one. And there is two double crochet coming out. That is called a double crochet increase. Now we're going to make another one. So yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch. 
and then yarn over, place a double crochet and then we're going to do another double crochet into the exact same stitch so as you can see I'm going right into the same stitch that we just did and then place a double crochet and this is our second double crochet increase we're gonna do our third one yarn over insert a hook and then just place one so this is the first double crochet do the second one in the same stitch So I'm doing my fourth increase, wait, no, wait, yeah, wait, uh, fourth, yeah. So as you can see, you have a rounded edge. And then let's do our fifth one. And then our last one. So my first double crochet and then my second double crochet into the seam stitch. So as you can see, the semicircle has ended here. And this part downwards is going to be all just one double crochet at a time. We're going to place our first double crochet into here and there will be no increases. After I finish the first one, I'm going to use my stitch marker to mark this is where the purple line ends, which, which means this is where the no increases part end. I'm going to keep on crocheting and just keep on putting one double crochet in each stitch here until the end. So if you don't know if you've made the right amount, count from the stitch marker. So this counts as one stitch because this is where we started the no increasing part. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So after counting, I have 12. So that means I'll have one more stitch. Yarn over and then place the last double crochet. Also, by the way, before starting round three, I would just like to cut this tail here. So after that, we're going to chain two to start round three. Again, this chain two is for giving the height. So yarn over and pull through. So we're gonna turn our work. So we're gonna place one double crochet at a time until we reach the stitch marker. So I've reached my stitch marker and this indicates that this is the last stitch for the no increasing part. After inserting, I'm just gonna remove the stitch marker and then place my last double crochet and then put the stitch marker back into the stitch. That means that I've reached the semicircle part where there will be increasing stitches. Round three semicircle, we're going to be doing a double crochet followed by an increase and a double crochet increase. So first we're going to be just doing one single crochet. So for the next stitch, just one double crochet. Wait, sorry, did I say single crochet? I meant double crochet. So one double crochet here, followed by an increase. So followed by a double crochet increase. So place the first first double crochet here and then increase which means 
we're gonna place a second double crochet in the exact same stitch one double crochet one double crochet increase then double crochet in the next stitch and then followed by a double crochet increase double crochet increase double crochet increase and then we're going to keep doing double crochet increase double crochet increase until we reach the stitch marker so it's a double crochet here and the next stitch it's going to be double uh, increase so place the first double crochet and then the second double crochet into the stitch Now it's double crochet, just one, double crochet, increase. My second double crochet in the stitch, now it's a double crochet increase. So we'll end on an increase. And now I've reached my stitch marker and then that means that these part below is just going to be one single crochet at a time. I'm going to remove the stitch marker, just double crochet, like this, and then keep on placing just one double crochet in each stitch until the end of the row. And then also count that there is 13 double crochet in total. So I've completed round three and you'll have something that looks like this. Now we're going to do our round four and then round four is going to be the same like this. And then round five is a fun part where we actually make like the scallops and like the finger of the paw. So now we're going to chain two to start round four. So yarn over, pull through and then yarn over, pull through again. And then turn our work to the left. And then now make 13 double crochet. If you don't want to count, just crochet until this stitch. So crochet into the stitch marker as well. And that would be 13. So insert my hook, place the first one. Remember there's no increases or anything. Just one double crochet at a time. And then I'm going to do the last double crochet here to reach 13 double crochet. After that, I'm going to insert my stitch marker back into the stitch. So now we have reached the semicircle part. So we're going to start by doing double crochet increase and then followed by two double crochet and then double crochet increase and then two double crochet double crochet increase two double crochet we're going to repeat this sequence for six times so first we're going to start with the increase so i've made my first double crochet insert my hook into the same stitch place another double crochet so this is the increase. I'm gonna make two separate double crochet. So the first one, the next stitch here. So the first double crochet and then followed by the second double crochet. Next, we're gonna do an increase.
So I've just made an increase here and I should have separate two double crochet. So I'll place one double crochet here. And then I'm gonna place another double crochet. And that is separated from the first one. Also guys, I'm so sad because I used a smaller hook. I'm supposed to use 3.5 millimeter. I used three millimeter instead. Yeah, I just have to keep going and then we do the whole thing with a larger hook. But it's okay, we'll keep going. So I have just finished my semicircle here and now I will work on the straight line. And then place just one double crochet then place the stitch marker back into the stitch. So here is my round four. So after that, we're going to fasten off and then we're going to start working with the scallops. So to fasten off, we chain one and then pull a big loop like around this big and then cut it from here and then tighten it. So I have remade my piece and I've used a bigger hook size. So according to the pattern, we're going to start round five. We're going to be starting with facing the right side of our work. We're going to look at the round one. So here is the round one in the center. As you can see here, it has little bumps on the stitch, whereas the right side, the stitches are a lot more smoother. We're going to be inserting a hook into the 14th stitch from the right. Two, four, six, eight. So this stitch is the 14th stitch. After that, we're going to introduce the yarn. So we're just going to place the yarn on top of the hook, just like this, and then pull it through. So we're going to do a single crochet in the next stitch, which is here. We're going to insert it into the stitch. And then also for the tail, we're going to hide it. So we're going to place it on top of our hook. So to do a single crochet, this is a new stitch but it is way easier than double crochet. I'm sure you guys got this. So after inserting your hook, we yarn over. So to yarn over, just bring your hook on top of the yarn and then grab the yarn like this, then pull through from the stitch and that would bring up a loop. Now we have two loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over, yarn over. We just wrap the hook around the yarn like this. Then we're gonna pull through these two loops. Just like this. And then now after making the single crochet, we're going to skip a stitch. So which means we're going to skip this stitch and then we're going to place six double crochet into the following stitch. So to do a double crochet, we're going to yarn over first, yarn over and then insert it into the second stitch. And then just do a normal double crochet. And we're gonna make five more to have a total of six. So I'm gonna place another double crochet into the exact same stitch. And then my third one, I'm going into the same stitch. And as you can see, it has a little, like the hole gets bigger and that's normal. And it makes it easier for us to see as well. And I have three more to go. So going back into the same stitch. So this is my last stitch. So to make sure we can just count it. So one, two, three, four, five, six. 
So after making six double crochet, we're going to skip a stitch. So this stitch is the next stitch, and then we're going to skip this. So we're going to move on to this stitch, we're going to make a single crochet. So insert our hook into the stitch. Also, we're going to hide the tail, so place the tail onto our hook, on top of our hook. And then now, to make a single crochet, we yarn over first. So yarn over, grab the yarn like this, then pull it through the stitch, and then bring up a loop. Now we have two loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over. Then pull it through two loops on our hook. Just like this. And this is a single crochet. Now we're going to repeat what we've done. We're going to skip one stitch, and then on this stitch, we're going to place six double crochet. So place our first double crochet into the stitch. I'm making my first one, and then make my second one into the same stitch. I'm going back into the same stitch, and then my third one. fourth one. The reason why we're making so many double crochet in just one stitch is to make a scallop stitch and it would create the paw, like the fingers for the cat paw. So after that we're going to do a single crochet in the second stitch. So this is the next stitch, we're going to skip this and then do a single crochet in the second stitch. So to do a single crochet we yarn over and then pull up a loop. Now we have two loops on our hook, we yarn over, and then pull through two. Just like this. Then now, after the single crochet, we're gonna skip a stitch, do six double crochet into the next stitch, into the second stitch. So, I'm doing my first double crochet, and then the second double crochet into the same stitch. So after that, we're going to skip a stitch, single crochet into the second stitch. This stitch right next to it, so we're going to skip the stitch and then we're going to insert a hook into the second stitch. Then we're going to do a single crochet. Yarn over, pull through. Now we got two loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over and then pull through two loops. We're going to repeat this two more times and I'm going to go a little bit quicker because it is just exactly the same. So we skip a stitch and then do six double crochet into the second stitch. After this, we're going to skip a stitch and then in the second stitch, we're going to insert it and then yarn over, pull up a loop, it got two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops, just like this. Now we're going to skip a stitch again and then in this stitch, we're going to place six double crochet. We're going to skip a stitch again, and on the second stitch, we're going to do a single crochet. Insert our hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, we got two loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over, pull through two loops again. So just like this, we're done with round five, and to finish off, we're going to do a slip stitch. To do a slip stitch, we're going to insert our hook into the next stitch. So insert it, and then yarn over, pull it through, so just pull it through like this and then tighten it. Remember to tighten it, it's super important or else you might mistaken it as a stitch. After this, you can just pull a tail like this. So now you have something that looks like this. For the tail sticking from the back, I'm just gonna cut it here. So for round six, we're gonna also be working on our right bottom. First, we're going to insert our hook into the first stitch. We're going to place our yarn on top of our hook. Then we're going to pull it through. After that, we're going to chain two. So to chain, we yarn over. 
then we're going to pull it through. Then we're going to chain again, yarn over. And the chain 2 doesn't count as a stitch, so we're going to place the very first double crochet into the exact same stitch that we did our chain 2. So yarn over, insert a hook into the very first stitch. And then as we can see, we have two tails here. We're definitely going to hide these two tails, so just place it on top of our hook. Then we're going to continue with our first double crochet. So just make a normal double crochet. Then we're going to be making a total of 14 double crochet. Then we're going to make our second one. And remember, it's just one double crochet at a time. We don't have any increases or anything. This is the single crochet stitch and we're also going to be making a single crochet on top of the single crochet. So insert your hook and then yarn over, pull it through the loop, uh, pull it through the stitch. Now we got two loops, yarn over, pull through all two loops. And that is a single crochet. So for the scallop, we're going to do two individual double crochet followed by two double crochet increases and then two individual double crochet and then followed by a single crochet so the sequence is like this also this might sound complicated or confusing but don't worry you guys have come so far if you could finish all of these you definitely have no problem finishing the whole cat paw gloves so yeah so first let's make our first double crochet in this scallop so we're gonna insert our hook into the next stitch place a normal double crochet So this is our first double crochet. Now we're gonna do another individual double crochet. Now for the following two stitches, it's gonna be both double crochet increases, which means two double crochet and one single stitch. Now we're going to insert our hook into the next stitch. Place a double crochet now in the exact same stitch we're going to place another double crochet into the stitch so going back into the same stitch place the second double crochet to make an increase for the next stitch it's also going to be a double crochet increase so my first double crochet the second double crochet in the exact same stitch For the last two, we're going to do two individual double crochet. So one double crochet each. So my second double crochet in the next stitch. So you should have something that looks like this. So single crochet, two individual double crochet, two double crochet increase, and two individual double crochet. Now we're going to repeat this for five times. And at the lowest point of the scallop, it's going to be single crochet. So single crochet in this stitch. We just insert it, then yarn over, pull up a loop. Now we got two loops, yarn over, pull through two. So for the scallop, again, two individual double crochet first. So insert a hook, then place one double crochet. And then the second double crochet in the next stitch. Like this. Then for the following two stitches, it's going to be double crochet increase, which means two double crochet in a stitch. So just place the first double crochet into the stitch first. Now we're going to place another double crochet into the exact same stitch. So going back into the same stitch, place another one. this again, another increase, after the two double crochet increase it's followed by two individual double crochet.
Now we've reached the lowest point of the scallop, we're going to make a single crochet. So yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, just like this. Now we're going to repeat this three more times. So I'm going to go a little bit quicker. So two individual double crochet. The first individual double crochet, the second one. And then for it, it's going to be double crochet increase. And then the second double crochet increase. Now here these two it's gonna be two individual double crochet. And then at the lowest point it's gonna be just single crochet. So I'm going to do this a little bit quicker. Two individual double crochet. Then two double crochet increase. double crochet then it's followed by a single crochet and then at the end we're gonna end with a single crochet this stitch we're going to be doing a single crochet just like this now for the rest of the row uh, for the rest of the row here we're gonna be inserting one double crochet at a time also for the tail here I'm also going to be hiding it within the stitches So as you can see, I'm just placing one individual double crochet in each stitch to make a straight line. So I'm doing my last double crochet here, like this. And then we'll finish our first piece and now we're going to fasten off. To fasten off, we're going to chain one, yarn over, pull it through the loop. Then we're going to pull a big loop and then we'll make a total of two so make another one we can go ahead and cut all the ends that are sticking out from our piece but not the ones that is attached to the piece and these are the tails that we've already weaved in and it's all hiding inside our stitches so that's why it's okay to just cut them and since we haven't hidden these tails yet, we're going to weave in. We're going to stick our needle into the stitches. So when we're sticking our needle into the stitches, try to just go through the loops. Try to be invisible as possible. As you can see here, you can't really see my needle. And then when you look at it from the back, you can't really see it as well. So that is good. And then I'm just going to pull it through. Then after that, I'm going to go back into the loops, but I'm going to skip the first loop because if we actually go back from the very first loop, we're going to undo everything. So I'm going back into the second loop, which is here, and I'm just going to stick it back. So just like this, we've hidden this tail. So after this, we can just cut it. So I'm going to do the same for the rest of the tails. After weaving in the ends, you'll have to clean piece of the cat paw. 
In the part two of the video, we're going to make the, the pink part on the paw as well as sewing these two pieces together and adding the ribbing at the bottom of the glove. So make sure you watch the part two over here.